Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown, Vols fans. Happy Selection Sunday to everybody. We're already seeing some stuff shaking up inside of that NCAA tournament bracket with Iowa State potentially. Uh, you know, they're sounding like they're more favored to be that one seed over Houston right now because they just drug Houston last night. So that would be a big shakeup. What would that mean for our volunteers and for the rest of the tournament, you know, for, for the rest of the bracket? Um, but tonight, okay, we may be going live at 6 p.m. for the selection show. We're not quite sure if we can do it just yet, but we'll probably have something posted out on the channel between 2 to probably 4 p.m. Just letting y'all know for sure. And if y'all would like to join us, we would love to have you. We would love to hear y'all's thoughts on what the different matchups look like, uh, you know, especially for our volunteers. But I think that we'll be fine. You know, we can just come out in that first game, right, start to get hot, build that confidence, and just ride that wave then we're still good enough to beat anybody. And we will always overanalyze, hey, we need to do this, we need to do that. But at the end of the day, it just comes down to players playing their best ball, playing with a whole lot of confidence. And again, man, if we do that, we can beat anybody. But this is also the uh, eve of spring practice for 2024. So we're all really excited about that, especially over here on this channel. We can't wait, okay, to get into football season. That's what we really love. That's what we're passionate about. Y'all know how we do. Any coverage that's out there on the spring practices, the drills, all that stuff, we'll put it all together, okay, as much as we possibly can, and we'll just kind of talk y'all through what we're looking at, okay, with the players' names, and, uh, you know, what the individual drills are and who's looking good. So in today's video, what we'll be talking about is, number one, okay, we've got several visitors coming up throughout spring, and this weekend, we already know that GMAC's coming up with Jamie French, that is the uh, five-star wide receiver from Florida. And, you know, GMAC has done a great job helping us recruit these blue chip players. We already knew that he was going to help us out a lot on the field. OK, that's still yet to be seen, but we can just tell from his skill set. He's going to be a true baller. OK, he's going to be a fan favorite. I think he already is a fan favorite because he's bringing up guys like Jamie French. So they're going to be on campus from today to tomorrow. I would anticipate that they'll probably be able to check out some practice tomorrow as well and Jamie French is a guy that I've been on record as saying that I feel like he's going to Ohio State but we never know what could happen maybe he comes up on campus for his first time with his dog GMAC and says hey I love it here you know this is where I want to be and that would be huge for our volunteers but I honestly wouldn't hold my breath on that there are several other blue chip players that will or you know that are expected to be up on campus this week as well we'll be talking about that and at the end I'll give y'all my top 10 of not necessarily like my final top 10, but it's a top 10 of at this point in the process, players that I feel like Tennessee would really want to or need to close out on. And I really ranked it more towards the positions of need for this team moving forward. Now, I think that we've done a great job of building up depth. I think that we will be fine in 2025. The transfer portal will help us out as well. But you still want to get in some good players, okay, uh, from the high school ranks that you can either utilize in 2025 or in 2026 and beyond. That's mostly where I feel like these players will be slotted to really get some good playing time. And I think that that's where, where they're going to help this team out at the most. And again, we'll get to that towards the end of the video. But before we do get into anything, do us a really big favor. Make sure to like and subscribe. All right, so the first player is going to be Jaden Harmon. He's expected to be on campus early this week. He's a four-star linebacker from Rome, Georgia, six foot one, 215 pounds. And right here, okay, you see that the crystal ball says that he's projected to Clemson, but that's just from Clemson insiders. I know that Tennessee was his favorite school earlier in the process. He started to get a lot more offers, so I know that he's opening things back up, and he just wants to look at his options. But I think that this is a guy that Tennessee can close out on if William Inge can make a good impression on him once he gets on campus. But he's the real deal. He's the total package. I feel like he's one of those players that, you know, you say, hey, if he comes in physically strong enough as a true freshman, he's going to play. I don't know how much, but he's going to get out on the field. He has everything that you want in a linebacker. He can play Mike. He can play outside. You know, he's going to be great in coverage. He's going to be great, obviously, in sniffing out that run, hitting people with some force, with some emphasis. Uh, but I think he can also get after that passer on blitzes. So, again, this is a guy that is one of my favorites in this entire class, and I feel like Tennessee needs to close out on him. I don't want to, you know, give away too much for my top 10 at the end, but I'm going to tell you right now, he's most definitely in that. All right, and the next player that's expected to be up on campus a little bit later on in the week is Jarquez Carter. Now, he's a six foot two, 264-pound four-star, according to 24-7 Sports Composite. 
Uh, defensive lineman, and he can play defensive tackle. That's where I've kind of got him slotted at. But he can also play strong side defensive end. I like his upside a lot more at tackle, and this is definitely a position of need for Tennessee. But he's got that twitchiness, right? He's got the size, and, you know, that coupled with that twitchiness, that's very hard to find. I think he's going to be great as a run stuffer, but also as a pass rusher. And we need more guys like this. And I really feel like his stock is going to continue to rise uh, throughout the entire process until he graduates or, you know, until the final rankings come out for 24-7 sports. And the next player that we're expecting to be on campus this week is Shakai Mills Knight, who plays at Baylor School in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, he's going to be teammates with Cam Sparks this season. I absolutely love his film. You want to talk about a guy that is literally everything that you want in a running back, okay? Now, I've talked with P, I've talked with Bray, I've talked with Kaysen, I've talked with everybody who will listen to me about this since 2021, that Tennessee needs to go out and get some of these bigger backs that can run downhill. And as you're looking at his film, what I'm getting from this is a whole lot of Quinshawn Junkins vibes. That's who he reminds me of. And Quinshawn was a guy that I said, man, if Tennessee could go out and get him from the transfer portal, we will be unstoppable. Whenever you have an offense where you can spread teams out, and you've got these bigger body backs that run downhill and that are also shifty and have good hands out of the backfield as well. It's so tough to game plan for a team like this. If we add him to the 2025 class with a running back like Justin Baker, I think that we'll be done. I don't think that we'll need to go out and add any more running backs, but I love his film and I hope that this staff can, you know, close out on him early on in this process because right now it doesn't look like he's, Got a whole lot of stars, okay? Uh, he's not very highly rated at this point, but he is, I mean, for sure, a four-star bare minimum. He could potentially even be a five-star. Just based off of his film, and especially when if you think about what he would mean to our system, he would be pretty much unstoppable. So I love the fact that the staff is going out and targeting guys, uh, you know, of different body types inside of that backfield. And right now, we've got a, a really great stable. Adding a guy like Mills Knight, would just increase the amount of depth that we have inside of that room. And the next guy that we're going to be talking about is Dwayne Morris. He's expected to be up on campus this week as well. He's listed as a three-star. He's an athlete, five foot, 180 pounds, also from Chattanooga, Tennessee. But this is a guy that reminds me so much of Boo Carter, just in how good of an athlete he is, uh, you know, with the ball in his hands. He's a very dynamic playmaker. So he could, you know, be a uh, guy that we utilize on special teams or he could be a guy that we can really utilize on offense at running back or, you know, as a slot wide receiver. We could also use him on defense at cornerback or at the star position, which is really a nickel position. I think that he could do any of that. He's a tremendous athlete, and hopefully our staff can make a really good impression on Mr. Morris. So those are just a few names, right? I mean, there's probably going to be a lot more players coming up on campus to visit our volunteers over the week and definitely throughout the entire time of spring practice. But it sounds like the weekend of March the 23rd, which would be this upcoming weekend, is supposed to be a really big weekend for visits. I know the guys like Zion Grady and Desan Brom, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, who is a tight end. They will be up on campus uh, this upcoming weekend. So a whole lot of very good, uh, you know, very high caliber blue chip types of players and also at positions of need. Now. I want to talk about who I want for this staff to close out on, you know, as early as possible, as quickly as possible, especially with some of these guys. I feel like it's almost necessary that we close out on them uh, early on in the process. But for this team moving forward, because like I talked about, right, just to start this whole video off, these players more than likely coming in as true freshmen, we have too much depth for them to get a lot of playing time. But I do feel like they could play a role, at least some of them can uh, in, in 2025. But really, it's going to be more important for 2026 and beyond. You want to get in some guys that you know, hey, man, like they've got the great foundation that we want at this position of need. And, you know, we get them into our weight room, you know, get them eating right, all that type of stuff. Teach them how we play ball up here in Knoxville. And once they get acclimated to that, we feel like they're going to be very, very special players. So we're going to start it off with defensive tackle because I feel like that's the most pressing position of need right now for Tennessee, especially in this class. We need to get in some guys, again, who can rotate in some here, okay? They need to be able to rotate in some as a true freshman, but we're probably going to be pretty heavy in that transfer portal for this position. I'm going to start off with Ethan Utley, who definitely has the body frame that you want, okay? He's got the size. He's got the length. He's very explosive. 
He does have that twitchiness. I think he's going to be great at stopping the run. That's where it starts for defensive tackles. But also, I think that he's going to do a really good job of getting after the passer as well. He's going to be making his decision on March the 28th. I don't know if everything really shuts all the way down at that point. Whether he picks us or not, I just think that he, I mean, he said that he's going to continue to take visits. So you never really know with him. But I would say that he's probably the biggest one because he's a big position of need for us, especially coming from Tennessee. Okay, he's in Nashville. We've got to recruit the Nashville area well. So for me, he's going to be number one on this list. And sticking with defensive tackle, a guy that we just talked about in Jarquez Carter. I love his film. You know, I love what he's bringing to the table. And everyone on this list, you know, this is just the guys that we are actually close to being able to land. It's not everybody in the entire country uh, because some of these players are already, you know, going somewhere else or they don't even have Tennessee up in their top five or any of that type of stuff. So these are the players that Tennessee actually has a real shot of closing out with. And Jarquez Carter, it sounds like he's more of a long shot than anybody else on this list. But I would say that the staff needs to do whatever they possibly can because he's so twitchy. You know, I honestly think, okay, that his upside may be even higher than Ethan Utley's. He's just, he's got a very special combination of size and twitchiness. His twitchiness is almost like a defensive end. And having that from the interior of the defensive line that's going to be a really big problem, especially for teams like Georgia. And I know I always talk about Georgia, but whenever you think about teams that have quarterbacks that you know are not very mobile, okay, you keep on going after guys like that, right? It's going to be very easy for our defensive tackles to get to them if they can make the offensive lineman miss inside of a phone booth. And I feel like Mr. Carter can definitely do that. So the next position group is going to be offensive line. And everyone that I'm going to be talking about right now is going to be offensive tackles. But we've talked about you can kind of move a tackle around. If you could play tackle in high school, you could probably play anywhere else on the offensive line. And usually you can get more bang for your buck uh, going out after these offensive tackles. And obviously we're going to be starting this one off with David Sanders Jr. Now he's from Charlotte, North Carolina. He's the number one offensive lineman in the entire country. Very close with GMAC. We talked about that earlier. Okay. We talked about how he's going out and getting these blue chip players early. He's doing a great job. I'm very proud of him. But David Sanders, okay. Being from North Carolina, which is a place that we are recruiting very heavily right now, okay? There's a lot of very good players coming out of that area over the next couple of seasons, including a quarterback in the 2026 class named Faison Brandon. Now, I may be mispronouncing his name some, but he's a guy that we offered early on, okay? We've been in on him early on, and lo and behold, Georgia comes in late. And it, pay attention to this, okay? And I may even make a whole video on this, too. Georgia has been offering almost every single player that we've offered after we offer them. It's almost like they're looking to see what we're going to do. And this is a big deal to me, okay? And I hate to get too far off topic, but I just want to point this out. Georgia hasn't had a real dual threat quarterback since, what, Justin Fields? And, I mean, they benched him. He ends up going on to the Buckeyes, and, you know, now he's playing in the NFL. Just got uh, traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers. So he's probably going to be around in the NFL for a long time. I don't even know who the other quarterback was that Georgia had. But anyway, I'm saying all that just to say they don't like mobile quarterbacks. They want a quarterback that's a statue that stands inside of the pocket. Why are they all of a sudden going after, uh, you know, this guy right here who is a dual threat guy? We've also seen him going after Juju in the 2025 class who's, you know, he's dual threat as well. It's very interesting to see that, that they're starting to kind of see the writing on the wall, okay? And they're coming after Tennessee players, I believe, because they want to try to make sure that we can't utilize them. I think that Kirby Smart understands that, hey, my time is really starting to run short because I can't keep on playing this, you know, boring, slow-paced, old-school style of football when everyone's going to be catching up to us. So the writing really is on the wall for UGA. And for those of y'all that don't believe that, the proof is right there. That's at least some of the proof. But we'll make a whole different video on that later on. So anyway, I think that David Sanders, for sure, obviously, you know, outside of what he can do on the field, he's going to be very important to us just to, um, you know, have a big presence in the North Carolina area because it is an area that, we're, I mean, you're going to be seeing a lot of players hopefully coming from up there over the next few seasons. And the next player is going to be Josh Petty. Now, Josh Petty grew up a Tennessee fan, and I don't know what's been happening here recently. I haven't heard a whole lot about him, but, it, you know, he's another five-star offensive tackle, and I would love to be able to close out on him. That would be huge. I don't know if we can get all three of these guys, but the next one would probably be Jalen Matthews. And I feel like he's really leaning very heavily towards Tennessee. Sounds like, you know, he loves us uh, ever since he came back and or ever since he came and visited us. I think it was probably like a month or so ago now, maybe two months. But, you know, he he fell in love with us and 
I think that we're going to be able to get him for sure. Okay. Now the biggest question is, do we try to hold off on some of these other players? Because he's rated as a four star. Do we hold off on some of these guys until we can get, you know, maybe some of the higher caliber guys or until they decide on what they're going to do. I don't think that Jalen Matthews is a guy that you would play with like that. If he wants to commit, you let him commit. And then whoever comes in after that is just, you know, pretty much gravy. But I do feel like we'll get at least two of those three. All right. Some of y'all might think I'm crazy whenever I say that, but I definitely do. I think that David Sanders, we're way up there with him. Josh Petty to me is the one that's kind of like an outlier, but he grew up as a, as a Tennessee fan. So maybe he will come to Knoxville as well. And, you know, the tackle room might be kind of starting to get a little bit deep, but move guys around like we said earlier. Okay. Move a guy over to guard or just like wherever you have any needs at, I think that we could most definitely do that. And I wouldn't be surprised to see us take maybe another tackle or two in this class. And this next position at safety, I think that this is a position that some people kind of skip over, right? Like whenever we listen to the analysts and talking about positions of need, we're not talking a whole lot about safety. And yeah, you know, we got some transfers in and, you know, we've got uh, John Slaughter, who I absolutely love, but that's only like for one to two years. I think that we need to go on ahead and find somebody for after that. And there's a guy that I absolutely love, and we've talked about him some before, and that is Loganza. I hope I'm saying his name right. His nickname is Shady. Last name is Hayward. And he's a four-star from Georgia, plays in a lower classification. But watching him on film, this is a guy that, just looking at him, looks like he's 6'2 and up, but he's listed at 6'1", over 200 pounds. He's playing safety, and he could also play linebacker. But I think that he's got a good enough skill set to say, hey, listen, we don't want you to gain too much weight. Stay back here at safety because we don't see too many of these safeties in college football anymore. They're starting to get smaller and smaller. I think that you can bring in a guy like this with, you know, the prototype size, okay, the old school prototype size, and you can be a real force across the middle of that defense because he can also cover. He's got an incredible skill set. And inside of our system, okay, for what we need, he's a five-star all day long. So, the middle of our defense is extremely critical. We've already talked about, uh, you know, defensive tackle. We haven't talked about linebackers just yet, but that's also going to be very important. I think we've already got some good ones, but safety, man, uh, you've got to have really good safeties the way that football is played these days. And I just think that Mr. Hayward could be, you know, one of the, I mean, literally all time greats. Like that's where I'm at with him. That's what his ceiling is for me. And I don't always say that, but he has that sort of a skill set. So, you know, P talked about him being like a Sean Taylor-esque sort of a guy. I really see that. So hope that we can close out on him and he will be up on campus, I believe, uh, June the 21st, if I'm not mistaken. So he's an absolute must-have, in my opinion. I would say he's probably my favorite player in this entire class. And the next position of need to me is going to be tight end. What I've been hearing from the insiders is that we would probably only take one more tight end in this class. And if we did take one, it would only be the son brain or Brahmi. I don't, you know, again, I don't know how to pronounce his name. We talked about him earlier. I would love to have him. You know, I love what he can bring to the table. Six, six, two twenty five, to, you know, two thirty, pretty much coming in at about, you know, college ready size. I love what he does as a pass catcher. I love his radius. He's coming from Kansas. And um, I mean, you know, he's going to be tough, right? He knows how to play in those elements. It's so important to have tight ends that can make those tough catches in different elements because that's going to be the quarterback's safety blanket. And, uh, you know, I just think that he would really check off all the boxes for this team. You've got him and Cole Harrison. we like to have two, okay? we like to have two guys that we can put out there. And I think that there would be a dynamic duo once guys like Ethan Davis and Holden stays leave. All right, next is going to be linebacker. We already kind of talked about Jaden Harmon. And we're just going to leave it there, okay? I do, you know, I already told y'all that he was going to be on this list. I feel like he's an absolute must-have player. Everything that you want, right? He fits that Tennessee mode. And I've told y'all this before, right? I feel like Tennessee and LSU, we just have a greediness about our teams. There's a toughness about our guys. And, you know, I feel like he fits that mode. He fits that billing. Again, I don't think he's going to go to Clemson. I mean, he might, but if he does, I mean, you know, you're not going to get the best out of yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you come to Tennessee, you will be the best version of yourself. And we really need more players like this. I feel like our linebacker room would be just phenomenal, probably the best in the entire country if we can land Jaden Harmon heading into the, the 2025 season and the 2026 season is going to be absolutely incredible. But the next position we'll talk about is wide receiver Cam Sparks. We briefly touched on him from Baylor School up there in Chattanooga. He's a guy that could play wide receiver, okay? He's that Brew McCoy type of a body, but he's a do-it-all athlete. He can do a lot of different things. You could line him up at running back. You know, you could put him in the backfield as an H-back type of a guy. 
Um, you know, you can put him on defense. He could play linebacker. He could play safety. He's a great athlete, but I really feel like Tennessee needs to close out on him. That's huge. Okay, he's another one of those five-star caliber players, and I just think that he would be tremendous adding to a, what I feel like is going to be one of the best classes in uh, Tennessee's history in 2025. Now, after him, I really want to get Radarius Jackson. I like him a lot. You know, I love the twitchiness that he can bring. He's a dog. He's tough. Uh, you know, you pair those two up with a guy like Joe Kim Dotson, and I think that, you know, we've got some great depth at wide receiver. It'll be the best that we've had since Coach Hypo has been uh, up in Knoxville, and I do feel like we can close out on all those players. So it's very exciting moving forward. Now, the last guy that we'll talk about is the running back that we spoke of earlier in Mr. Shakai Mills Knight. Really love what he can bring. Okay, we've already touched on him pretty heavily, but I definitely want to put him into this list because, again, man, him and Justin Baker as a one-two punch, that would be beautiful, right? It's a little bit of different body types, but there's two running backs that run hard, and, you know, it's almost like a different change of pace. I think that that's very important because we're getting to a point now, guys, where literally our team is getting so talented and we can do so many things that we may have a completely different looking starting offense, starting maybe even defense from week to week based off of who we're playing. And I think that that would be cutting edge because we don't see that a lot in football, but the skill sets are just so pronounced these days that you can actually do it. And I think that with the way that the transfer portal is set up, you may need to start doing it. And I think that that is what the, <laughs> I think that that's what the game plan is for Coach Hypo and for the rest of the staff. But that's it for this video. I just wanted to kind of keep it brief and it may have kind of ran over longer than what I wanted it to, but I hope that y'all did enjoy it. Please make sure to keep a close eye out on the channel later on today, because again, I will be letting y'all know if we'll be going live at about 6 p.m. But thank you as always for staying all the way to the end. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with your friends, family, and other volunteer fans. And we'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.